Following the last episode where I presented the results and significant improvements that can be made using a technique called asset filtering, this time I turn my attention to the results of time frame filtering. How will this compare? Find out in 15 seconds after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Following the significant improvements we saw last time using a technique that I call asset filtering, we now turn our attention to another technique that's similar in principle but focuses on the noise signature of time frames instead of assets. But once again, the improvements that came out of the research are significant with far reaching consequences, so they can't be ignored. Let's see. So time frame filtering is the second of the techniques that I covered previously. And this time we get to see the results of this particular technique. Now, just as a quick reminder of the kind of improvements we saw with asset filtering, it looked like this. On the left, we have a strategy, which was a mean reversion strategy. And this was traded on 28 currency pairs initially. And so we can see on the left hand side, we're experiencing drawdowns here in the region of 35 to 40%. But look what happened when we started to trade just the eight currency pairs that were most suited to this type of mean reversion strategy in terms of noise. The improvements are significant. So let me remind you of the strategy details because it's exactly the same strategy that I've used in this time frame research. So it's based on a mean reversion premise and it's a long short strategy, which is why I chose to trade currency pairs and it's symmetric. So the rules used to open a long trade are exactly the opposite of the rules used to trade a short trade with no differences to the parameters at all. And the strategy opens trades based on the breaking of either an overbought or oversold threshold level. And then the trade remains open until a point that the prices return to mean levels. That is unless, of course, the stop loss is hit in the meantime. And in this particular strategy, I was using a volatility stop loss. So once again, the purpose of this particular episode isn't anything to do with the mean reversion strategy per se. It's all about the analysis of the effect of noise on the trading system. And so I'll be covering the most noisy time frames and comparing those with the least noisy time frames. And again, the measure I'm using here is Perry Kaufman's efficiency ratio. And here I've categorized the time frames into two blocks. The first of those is those that exhibit the noisiest activity, those being the M1, M5 and M15. And because they're the noisiest, the theory says that these will be the most suited to mean reversion type strategy. So these should perform quite well. And then over here, we have higher time frames, which are more efficient and therefore less noisy. And these are the ones that maybe don't perform quite as well. So let's take a look at the results. And those of you who saw the last episode will remember this chart. It's the same chart because it's for the H1 timeframe, which is what we used last time for all 28 currency pairs. And so once again, this is going to be our baseline result. 
And if you remember, this had nearly 13,000 trades and had a CAGR over mean drawdown of 0.25. So let's compress this a little so that we can see it side by side with other timeframes. Now remember, we're looking here at the H1 timeframe, which just so happens when measured by the efficiency ratio to be the most efficient timeframe and therefore the least noisy. And so if anything, we'd expect this time frame to give us our worst results for a mean reversion strategy. So let's now take a look at what happens when we see the M15 and the H4 results. And as you can see, both of these produce improvements. Let's just take a look at some of the metrics to get an idea of the magnitude of those improvements. So first of all, in terms of number of trades, on the left hand side here, as we'd probably expect, the M15 timeframe produces many more trades. And in this case, around about 47,000 trades. So very, very highly statistically significant here. Over on the right hand side for the H4 timeframe, it's about 2,800. And in terms of our performance metric, which is the compound annual growth rate over the mean drawdown, you can see in both of these instances, we've got significant improvements. So the M15 has a value of 1.23 and the H4 has a value of 1.9, up from that baseline level of just 0.25 for the H1 timeframe. And remember, all of these results represent the results from all 28 assets. These improvements that we have seen here are pretty much what the theory said we should have expected. So as you can see, the noise levels for both the M15 and the H4 have increased compared to the H1. But what will happen when we take a look at the M5? Should we expect an even bigger improvement here because this is noisier? Well, let's take a look. And the answer is that no, we don't see a big improvement. So why is this? Well, having taken a look at the underlying trades that form this, the conclusion I've come to is that it's because the trades in the five minute time frame are relatively small in terms of the amount of profit or loss that each of those produce. It means that the level of charges for things like swap and spread and commission are relatively large compared to those small values. Whereas in the higher time frames, charges become much less significant. But if we look at the results, it is still profitable. It still has a return of approximately 130%, but the drawdowns are absolutely horrific. And so clearly it wouldn't be a tradable strategy in this time frame. So if we ignore this M5 time frame, based on the fact that it's untradeable because of the relative size of charges versus trade size, then the time frame filtering does give us huge improvements. And we saw these in both the M15 and the H4. And so as far as I'm concerned, the theory holds. And I've got a lot more added confidence to say that because of the statistical significance, especially in that M15 timeframe that had a sample size of around 50,000 trades. Okay, so we've now covered two of the different techniques and next time we'll move on to the third, which is instantaneous noise filtering. Now, if you're getting value from this video series, then please do remember to give me a like for each of the videos that you watch and do share them as well on the forums that you use and also the social media sites. If the next episode's already released, then you'll see a link to that top right now. But until next time, when we look at instantaneous noise filtering, trade safe.